As cyclists, we're often obsessed with our power meters and power readings, and it's great fun comparing stats with our friends. But have you ever wondered if, as cyclists, we can produce enough power to even slightly offset the amount of power that our everyday electrical items use? No? Well, I have, so in this video, I'm going to do all the hard work so you don't have to. I'm going to be using two power measuring devices for this video. This one here is the first one, which measures the power used by electrical items. And then I'm going to be using my Wahoo Kicker, which has a built-in power meter to monitor my own power outputs and see what I'm doing. But there are going to be a few exceptions I'm going to allow myself, because I very quickly realised that simply boiling the kettle was going to outpower me, and I couldn't replicate that. So what I'm going to do is I don't have to replicate the exact power and the exact time of the electrical items, but I have got to replicate the total power that it uses. For example, if a kettle uses 2000 watts for one minute, then I would have to ride at 250 watts for eight minutes to replicate that power. So theoretically, what I'm trying to see is if it's possible as a human being to replicate the power that our day-to-day -day items consume. Which leads me to my other exceptions, because for this to work in the real world, I'd have to actually produce more power than what the electrical items are using, because power generators are not 100% efficient. I would also need a way to store that energy or supply it back to the power grid. And although that's not easy to replicate, it is possible because people that have solar panels on their roof sell their surplus energy back to the power grid and that's how that works. I mean, imagine if we could get to a time where we could sell our power from our indoor training sessions and generate money. Anyway, back to the real world. I first need to record the power consumed by some of my data items at home. Cue GoPro. got my data to look at and I've done some calculations but I just want to point out it's not every single item that your household uses it's just some of the common items that I use day to day so we're looking at like toaster kettle laptop charger microwave some lights just those sort of items and I've converted that power consumption into kilowatts per hour so that I know what I got to try and replicate whilst riding the bike and from the items that I'm measuring I'm using a total of 0.48 kilowatts per hour as energy consumed, which is equal to 480 watt hours consumed. Well, I already know there's absolutely no way I can sustain 480 watts for an hour, otherwise I'd be probably one of the world's best cyclists. And even when I was racing and at my best, 380, 390 watts was about the most I could sustain for an hour. So taking into account my current condition, I'm gonna target riding at 250 watts for the duration of this test to see if I can replicate that power. So riding at a continual 250 watts, it's gonna take me one hour and 55 minutes. And that's gonna take some going this evening, especially after a busy day here at GCN Mega Base. So I better get my feet up for the afternoon and take it steady. Right, I've made it home from GCN Mega Base and it's now time to go on the indoor trainer and see what it's gonna be like to replicate some of those power demands. So I'm one hour into my uh, bike power challenge, which means I've got 55 minutes to go. I'm tired, I'm out of breath, I'm sweaty, I'm holding 250 watts. I'm not gonna lie, it's harder than I anticipated. My uh, form is not in great shape at the moment, so um, I bet sick at it really. Um, see you in 55 minutes, bye. Okay, so theoretically I have proved that I can replicate the power consumption of some of my day-to-day -day electrical items, but I can confirm that even with the best intentions in the world, I will not be doing that every single day of the week. It's just not practical. But it has got me thinking, I wonder what as a collective our cyclists could achieve if we could put all of our power outputs together and harness that. What could we power? Anyway, my brain's fried, so that's too much thinking for tonight, so I'm gonna run that one through um, back at GCM Megabase tomorrow. So I'm off to get some dinner and have a shower. See you later. 
Right, I've had a good night's sleep, and to help me understand what cyclists as a collective could achieve, I've actually contacted the guys over at Zwift for some of their stats, because I want to know if as a collective of cyclists, the number of daily activities on Zwift, and the time ridden, and the average output of those activities, if it totals up to something far more impressive than what I achieved. Zwift have been kind enough to supply me with some of their stats, and they've said that on average, there are approximately 300,000 activities recorded every day on Zwift, and the average activity length is just over an hour, so 61 minutes, and that the majority of Zwift users have an FTP between 150 watts and 300 watts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the average of that and use 225 watts. Which means if you add all those numbers up and crunch all that data, every day, theoretically, Zwift users produce 67,500 kilowatt hours of energy, which is enough to power 6,000 homes for an entire day. And while on the face of it, that seems really good until you break it back down and realize that it's taken a total of 50 people one hour to produce the same amount of power that one house has used throughout a day. Earlier on, I mentioned about the thought of how amazing it would be if one day you could sell the power from your indoor training sessions back to the electrical companies. But I wouldn't get your hopes up because I've done some more calculations and I've worked out that even Sir Bradley Wiggins himself for his hour record attempt back in 2015 and his reported 440 watts of power, that amount of power, if you could harness it, would only be worth about nine pence to the electricity companies. So don't get your hopes up. So is it possible to match a typical household's complete energy consumption? Well, no, it turns out it's nearly impossible because a typical UK household uses eight kilowatt hours of energy per day, which is 8,000 watt hours. So even if I was to ride continually for 24 hours, I'd have to ride a continual 333 watts and that's just completely impossible. There's no way I could do that. So unless we can reduce our power consumption considerably, us measly humans won't be matching that anytime soon. That's it for this experiment, and as fun as it was, it has highlighted just how much energy us human beings consume, and that it's near impossible to recreate it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and why not let us know your thoughts on this down in the comment section below, and make sure you turn your lights off when you're not in the room. See you later.